It's 4 o'clock on a Monday, and you know what that means. It's time for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live. This week, once again, starring my best friend and special co-star, Mr. Happy Clappy Q. Yay! <laughs> uh, I'm a sucker for anything on a pull cue. Um, okay, so welcome to the big show. Let me get my chat room open so I can say hello, everybody. Hello. There you are. Um, I brought the, the happy clappy cue stick, or cue, I should say, back. Um, uh, one of our members, um, I guess it was about a year ago he came to town, David Skinner, and uh, he was just getting ready to join Taxi, and we chatted quite a while, and we hit it off. And he is retired from the financial services industry, and uh, he is determined to succeed with music, and he will. And he was reading uh, Dean Crepain's book, um, I think, Demystifying the Genre, Demystifying the Cue, and he saw Dean's reference to Happy Clappy Cue, uh, and we've used that on the show. So he put together a pool cue and a microphone cover and Minnie Mouse donated a pair of hands and built this thing, which I thought was so novel and so sweet that he took the time to do that, that uh, I had it on the show last week. And because this week's show is a continuation of last week's show, which is picking the uh, some music for the top ten on the Taxi website for the month of September, that I thought I would bring Happy Clappy Q back. So there you go. And uh, I spoke to Dave on the phone again. Uh, thank you, Dave. So he's actually at a lodge in Colorado right now. And he said, oh, you should come up and we'll do some fly fishing. So right after the show, I'm hopping on my private jet to fly up there. <laughs> Don't have a private jet. Actually, that's not true. Yes, there's my jet now. And I will be getting on the jet right after the show and flying like 10 miles west of here on the freeway to go home. Anyway, don't forget to hit that button down in the right-hand corner if you're watching this on YouTube and subscribe, and you know the drill on the like button. We need thumbs up so that we can feel really good about ourselves. There you go. Without any further ado, we are going to uh, oh, say hello to the guys in the chat room. Hello, Ken, Darren, piano, guitar, vocal, uh, Bubbles, Danny Weber, Dean Turner, Gloria Covington, uh, Harlan, Michael, Lori Wynn. Should scroll down a little bit. Uh, Peter Rahill, Mary Band, uh, M3 Lucian. I'll be here all day long. Anyway, Richard Charles. Hi, guys. Hello to you all. So last week we got through um, 23, I think? 20. 20. Bria's in here today. Um, she's sitting across from me. She's the DJ. Make sure I got my music up. Excuse me. Uh, so we are going to listen to 20 more today. And then she's got the tabulations from last week's show. And she will do the math. And uh, then I guess probably on next week's show we'll announce who the people are that made it into the top 10. Um, something else oh and next week don't miss the show we haven't exactly figured it all out yet but we're going to do a pre-road rally show to give you guys an update on what some of the panels in the ballroom are going to be um going to have bria do a little segment are you here next week or no no no, no. <laughs> then bria won't be doing a segment next week shoot you know what maybe i'll do a different show next week and wait for her to come back the week after because she wanted to do something uh which is basically the road rally from the perspective of somebody who first met Taxi and came to the Road Rally as a member, and now she works here, so she can kind of give you both sides of that coin. Um, all right, without any further delay, let us proceed. This first song has an unusual title, uh, and it's all in caps, which is I-T-I-A-S. So we're thinking that that could be a, what do you call it, a, a synonym, or a, a, what do you call that when uh, you use the letters like FBI uh, stands for... It's, uh, <laughs> and she's smart. She did pretty well in school. <laughs> I did. What is it called? Uh, oh, acronym. Acronym. Thank you. Uh, two rock or two rock stars. Two geniuses. <laughs> I'm sitting here. Uh, I gotta admit, I'm a little wired today. Why? Because one of the guys on the staff 
works at a company that is not Rockstar, which is our sponsor for the show, and they sponsor the Road Rally every year, but he brought in some Red Bull flavored stuff because his roommate works there. And I've had one and a half of these today. I'm a little bit wired, i got to say. Sorry, Rockstar. I feel like I'm cheating on you. Uh, okay, so here we go. I-T-I-A-S by Adrian and Paul Marzorati. Hit it. votes plus one we're not doing minus ones plus one if you think that should be in the taxi top 10 and somebody brought up a good point in the chat room which is with a different number of voters this week than last week how will we tabulate the votes frankly we should probably you know last week the the audience was growing as always happens during the show the number of audience members goes up I think people go oh it's time for Taxi TV. I better log on and watch the show. Um, so, you know, honestly, I don't have a good answer yet. Um, I guess it could be proportional, but um, then we'd have maybe what, you know, here's what we'll do. is We could take the top five from last week's show, because that's all relative to last week, and then the top five from this week's show, and then we would have our top ten. So cast your votes if you think it should go in the top 10. Um, I also want to give a shout out. Uh, I was going to play some of this stuff on the show today, but then decided not to uh, impinge on the airtime of the people who were kind enough to send stuff in for the show. But I was checking forwards on some stuff that we were sending to a record label. Uh, the CEO of the record label actually asked me to get my ears on it before it left here and went over to them and I heard some stuff um, from some taxi members that was like mind-blowingly good really really strong and I remember the other night when I was sitting in my office listening thinking I, I could take five of the seven things that were on this forward list walk them into the VP of A&R at any record label and go you need to hear this stuff so uh, just some of the people who I noticed that I really like were Sabelle Magazi uh, Mary McAvoy, who had two great songs on there, Colleen Francis, Olivia Millershin, and those people had, I would say, the, the best stuff on that list. Really, really, really strong. So it just made me proud to own a company with so much great music. Um, okay, voting looks like uh, good to go. On your yeah, we're good. Bri is tabulating. As I'm chatting away. Yeah. Are you ready for the next one? All right. I am ready for the next one. And this one is called Whoever Said Love Lasts Forever. And it's by Ryan Casey. Here we go. It's been a while since I thought of you. When you're at what you're Thank you. 
Oh, I realized something. Okay. <laughs> when the computer was sitting next to me last week, I could see how long the song had run, and I knew when it was about time to do the fade. But, uh, all right, cast your votes. Plus one if you think that adorably funny song should be in the taxi top ten for the month of September. You're right. Happy Clappy needs a cowboy hat. All right, you guys, casting your votes. There we go. I'm seeing those votes pouring in. I hope the voting is not influenced by any Russians. <laughs> that would be awful. <laughs> I have to call the news, uh, all the cable news networks, and, and report the... Uh, uh, what are you voting corruption? Uh, for those of you who are seeing ads, I see some people saying that you're seeing ads. Have you tried the ad blocker? Download an ad blocker for your browser. They work and they're free. <laughs> uh, okay. I I think the votes are all in. Um, how's it looking on your end, Bria? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I don't have taxi members in Russia. Actually, we do have a couple taxi members in Russia. We have taxi members in pretty much every country. Um, okay. So that was whoever said love lasts forever. It was very cute. And now we're moving on. This one is called Blues in the Night by Jan Fabiankovic. Fabiankovic. Got it. Here we go. I get the blues in the night When love isn't right Dawn comes to color me blue Oh baby, you're all that I have I need you so bad Please come and see our love through Tell me you stay in my heart We'll make a new start I'll hold you till heaven returns I'll give the blues in the night Love isn't right Oh, how my lonely heart burns Let me show you My field of dreams And let wonder become the me votes plus one if you'd like to see that in the taxi top 10 for the month of September I don't know about you that made me want to have like a scotch and a cigarette in a really dimly lit bar that smells like it's been around for about 50 years and for those of you who live in Miami do you remember Fox's uh, Fox's Tavern in South Miami because it was exactly that kind of place with the scallop shaped booths that uh, the whole place had, had, had day drinkers. You'd go there at like 11 o'clock in the morning. There were already the same people sitting in the bar stools that were still there from the day before. It was awesome. All right, the votes are coming in. The three, <laughs> Mary Band says, the three bars I just heard reminded me a bit of Dionne Warwick. I thought you were going to say the bar I was talking about reminded you of Dion Warwick. Uh, okay. 
Peter Rahel, the ever funny Peter Rahel says three bars uh, make me think you're Irish. <laughs> uh, all right, I think the votes are in. You good to go over there? Yep, yeah, we're good. All right, moving on to number four. Notice I'm being much speedier this week. This one's called Crazy Banjo Playing Fool, and it's by Steve Bryant. Crazy banjo playing full. Cast your votes. Plus one. If you should make it into the taxi top ten for the month of September. Um, we're trying to be even-handed about as far as we play them. If, if you could keep an eye on them and, and let me know when we're at about a minute and a half. Sometimes, depending, like the, the slower song, you know, a minute and a half, you're still in the middle of the first verse. So we're trying to do our best to give you at least a verse and a chorus so that the voting can be... Uh, you know, pretty fair. Yeah, and remind them not to vote until after the song's over. That's right. I saw M3 Lucian jumped in there a little I don't know song. if that's for this or for the last song. Right, and we don't want anybody influencing uh, the rest of the voting. So, yeah, restrain yourselves. Don't cast your vote until the song is over and you've heard our wonderful studio audience. You know, we should do an episode one week where we invite a bunch of local taxi members to come over for Taxi TV Live and uh, maybe get some pizza and beer and see how many members. <laughs> Bria goes like this. That was her version of clapping. <laughs> Didn't break a sweat while doing that. <laughs> All right. Um, all right. I think we're good. I think the voting is all done. All right. Um Peter Rahill says, a minute and a half, you might miss the bridge and fall down and go boom. By the way, people often, this brings up a really good point. People often ask, how long do the screeners listen to a song at Taxi? And we implore them to listen at least as far as the bridge, so that way they've heard all the elements of the song. Um, if you were to walk up and, excuse me, um, that wasn't a rock star burp, that was a Red Bull blueberry bird. Uh, if you walk up to a screener and say, gee, how long do you listen? Most of them would tell you that they listen at least that far and they let it keep running and they start jotting down their thoughts while the music is uh, still playing. And it's not infrequent that they'll go back to a specific section of the song and check that out. Um, Ken DePotter says, we need a taxi TV episode shot like The Office going around with the cameras, the screeners do their job. We actually did that years ago. And, and sadly, uh, at least as far as the socialization factor goes, so many of the screeners now work remotely that the screener room is incredibly empty compared to, there was a time period where it was so packed that we had to like stick people in the conference room and do nighttime sessions and weekends. But when gas prices hit five bucks a gallon, I started letting people screen from home. And so many of our screeners, because of LA's wonderful uh, real estate prices, have moved. So people that kind of earn their stripes with us and then eventually move, like we had a great screener move back to Australia. A um, couple have moved to Nashville. One of our all-time great screeners moved to Colorado. So they work remotely now, which is very fashionable in this day and age. Um, but we, we have done a walk around before and uh, 
I mean, frankly, you'd see me walking around having the staff give me dirty looks for interrupting their workflow because basically they just sit their computers all day like other office workers. Um, taxi TV with laugh tracks. That is completely doable right now. We spare no expense. All right, uh, here we go. We are moving on to song number five. This one is called Ride Tall by Rollin Jewett. Or Jewett. your votes plus one if that should make it into the taxi top 10 for the month of September and while you're casting votes I'm going to do a little homework here cross some stuff off next one up in a moment is going to be the Requiem by Christian Paul Charles Wilson just popped in. Hello, Charles. Good to see you. All right. Uh, we are moving on, and now this is The Requiem by Christian Paul. an instrumental and not a song um, but we are playing those and you can vote on them so vote plus one if you'd like that to be in the taxi top ten 
Next up to bat in about 30 seconds will be Jumping Ship by Pat Sheldon. I'm looking for other cool sound effects to amuse myself and hopefully you guys. Okay, there are the votes coming in. Ken DePotter says he uses Adblock uh, One Word with Chrome and he doesn't get any ads. I'm telling you, it makes the whole experience so much better. But we are working, by the way, on uh, taking the show to another platform, as they say. That's how I feel about change. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on. Okay. Um, this one is Jumping Ship by Pat Sheldon. Come on, Bria. Get it together. <laughs> to the taxi top 10 list for next month. Turn this back down. Very pretty voice on that last one, gotta say. Not that I want to influence the voting in any way, shape, or form. Uh, okay, next up to bat in about 30 seconds is going to be Date Night by Ed Ramos. And I'll be right back because I'm going to make it a little cooler in here. Of course, it turns on just as I head over there. Okay, looks like the voting is done for that one. Oh, excuse me, a couple more rolling in there. How come you never see people like uh, any of the late night hosts burping on camera? I mean, I know the shows aren't entirely live that they do edit, but I think, uh, you know, burp every now and then adds a little humanity to the whole thing. Um, okay. All right, we're good to go. Voting is done. So now we're moving on. This one is called Date Night by Ed Ramos. Closer to 
Saturday night that Sunday night I look ahead six days of the All right. Cast your votes. Plus one for Ed Ramos's song, Date Night, if you'd like to see that in the Taxi Top Ten. Date nights are good. My wife and I try and do date night every week, but we don't do it on Saturday, because you can never get tickets to the good movies on Saturday night. Um... Where are those votes? Lots of discussion about opening different windows and using the chat in this browser versus that browser. Bubbles, no minus ones. <laughs> We're only doing plus ones. <laughs> minus one. It's like negativity. Can't handle the negativity. Wouldn't it be cool for presidential elections? And don't get don't go political on me. I'm the only one that can do that today. Uh, but wouldn't it be cool if in, in uh, presidential elections or congressional elections, if you could go in and vote plus one or minus one? I think that that would make things much more interesting as they uh, watch the tallies. Have you seen any votes come in for that one yet? I don't know if there's a, a longer than normal lag. Okay. I'm gonna wait like ten more seconds because the people that are watching this in the archive are going, Why is that dude in that turquoise shirt just sitting there staring? <laughs> okay. I know. It's, I'm, I'm auditioning for a job at Mount Rushmore. Um, okay, moving on. This one is called Abuse by Linda Casco. one if you think that that should be in the taxi top ten. Uh, when's the eclipse? Any 23rd? Idea? Really? I, I think. I, I'm at a loss. I know it's coming up. I, um, I don't think we're going to get a great view of it here in LA. I saw the path of optimal viewing and it looks like it starts up in Washington State and then kind of heads down to Georgia and does a diagonal across the country like that uh, because we live in LA they'll probably charge money to watch it <laughs> and remember don't look right at it don't do that I want to know how many people in school had to take a shoebox and glue a piece of white paper to the inside of it and put a pinhole at the other end for eclipse viewing because I remember I had to okay votes are coming in for that one Hits landfall in Oregon. There you go. I knew it was somewhere up there in the northwest. Next Monday. Thanks, Bubbles. Tasha Parker Gibbs chimes in. That's called a pinhole viewer. In my case, it might have been a pinhead viewer. <laughs> they just renamed it to make me feel better about myself. 
Charles Wilson says it's big news up there in Oregon. Yeah, hopefully you guys can take a break from farming weed to go look at it. I saw some show the other day, I think it was on Vice or something, about the weed farming industry. It's just mind blowing. Um, who would have thunk it? Wow, Jesse, I didn't know you are in Myrtle Beach. All right, voting is done for that one, so we're going to move on. Um, this one is called, I love the title, Without You Makes Me Crazy by Harlan Michael Weniger. Here we go. Oh, we actually have one right before that. Judgment Which, oh, Day. Judgment Day. Sorry, I, I checked it off prematurely. Sorry, we're going to listen to Judgment Day by David Rhodes. Harlan, you'll just have to wait. Judgment Day, Judgment Day by David Rhodes. Cast your votes, plus one if that should make it onto the Taxi Top Ten list for the month of September. Some pretty fancy picking there. Um, still people talking about the uh, eclipse in the chat room. And yes, I didn't mean that you should look through the pinhole. Don't do that, because that could, in fact, fry your retina, um, and that would not be a good thing. You're supposed to let the sun shine through the pinhole, and then it projects an image of the eclipse on the white paper on the opposite end of the shoebox. Um, I don't know about you, but every shoebox I have actually has photographs from the 60s and 70s in it. So um, I, I'm going to watch it on TV. I saw uh, Mary Band mentioned that ought to go for that bluegrass listing. We actually have um, a new connection in the world of bluegrass that's bringing some pretty awesome listings. Um, which is something we haven't seen in a very long time around here. Uh, okay, we are good to go. I think all the votes are in on that one. So now, without any further ado, we are going to move on to Without You Makes Me Crazy. This is by Harlan Michael Weniger.
Boy, Bria really jumps right on there, man. The minute the chorus is over, boom, she's out of there. I wanted the <laughs> instrumental, though. Uh, that's true, you did. Uh, so cast your votes, plus one if you think that should go in the taxi top ten um, for the month of September. And somebody said, what genre is this? Um, I don't know. Um, probably pop rock, um, it, it, like a, a rock ballad. Now they're making jokes in the chat room about Americana versus Russiacana. And every album cover has a picture of Vladimir Putin riding a horse without his shirt on. <laughs> what the hell was he thinking? <laughs> It's tough. You know, we've done a couple episodes. Maybe I should do one of those uh, next week. I don't know. Uh, but we've done some episodes. What is the genre? And it's really good for making uh, taxi members aware of how stuff that isn't describable with the genre um, makes it kind of hard to use. Um, a lot of times people just create music from the heart. You know, it's like, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm creating. I'm not worrying about what genre it's in. But then when a music supervisor or a record label, A&R person, somebody, a publisher is looking for music in a particular genre and your music doesn't fit into a genre, I know that people want to say, gee, I don't like being pigeonholed. But it just makes your music easier to use. And when it's easier to use, that means more people are going to hear it and the greater the probability is you'll be able to earn some money doing something you love. Okay, the votes are pouring in flying by <laughs> you know who's missing this week um, Scott Hansen's not in the chat room is he let me go down the alphabetical list no Scott Hansen I like it when Scott's here he's a funny dude Synthman says he got a song back last week uh, with a bravo but a rejection. And it happens a lot, you know. It's a, it, Sadly, it's not just an industry where people go, wow, that's awesome. I'm going to plop that song or that instrumental into my TV show just because it's so good. They really need it to... It's not that they're so set on I've got to have rock in that scene, but that's what they think they need so that's what they're going to look at first and they don't want to hear a bunch of other stuff that doesn't really fit what they think they need so you can't send you know like an americana song for a scene that somebody thinks they need rock in why would they need rock um let's say it's a, a car chase uh, an up-tempo rock instrumental is going to work way better for that than a uh, an americana thing or a ballad um are we all done voting? Cool. All right, moving on. I love this. This is a great title. Cookie Cutter Boy by Vicki Smith. You act the same. You tax the same. You never have. My back's the same. You say you like the things that I enjoy. Something's wrong with this old song. I know how this will end for long. You're just my hopeless cookie cutter boy. Why can't I see how this will be before you break my heart and
to vote for Cookie Cutter Boy by Vicki Smith. I want to make a comment about that one, but I'll wait till you guys are done voting. Cold enough in here for you, Bria? <laughs> it's like, it's a, okay. really? You're hanging in there? Yeah. <laughs> I like it chilly, but it's even chilly for me right now. It's like it's minus fun. Nah, it's okay. It'll it's click off a sec. Huh? <laughs> minus what? Yeah, it's pretty chilly. <laughs> well, you know, with the studio lights beating on me, you got to keep it cool. <laughs> Charles Wilson. Uh, he's having a conversation in the chat room uh, with Tasha, and Tasha had commented that she loves the the commentary and the educational aspect of Taxi. And Charles says, Tasha, you learn so much from submitting as well. The screeners are really good and constructive with their comments. Uh, you should submit something. It's true. You know what? A lot of people are afraid to submit because they don't want to have their heart broken. Look at it as a learning opportunity. Uh, nobody's out to hurt you. Nobody's out to make you feel bad. The advice they're going to give you is going to move you forward faster, but you've got to submit to get the advice. I mean, yeah, you can get free advice from me, but you know what they say about free advice. Um, rejections are a big part of the learning process, but they're not rejections. It's not being rejected. Rejected would be like, you suck. It's not that kind of thing. It's about, this doesn't really work but here's what you could do to make it better, or here's what you could have done on this pitch to have a better shot at getting it forward. Um, all right. Uh, okay, so I, I want to comment about that one because I really liked her voice. Reminded me kind of early Dolly Parton a little bit. Uh, and, and the song turned out to be good, um, but in the beginning, the guitar was so low in the mix, and there was like, it felt timid. And I remember thinking, this isn't going to go anywhere, and then all of a sudden, it surprised me. But you've got to grab the listener's attention and, and pique their interest right from the get-go. So I think that song is a diamond in the rough, and that would just be my unsolicited uh, advice there would be to get the guitar up as loud as the vocal um, before the vocal comes in and then have it be balanced well with the vocal when the vocal comes in and, and you could definitely get people more interested more quickly so there's that um, okay so we're good on the votes and we're moving on Wow, I'm actually ahead of schedule. Yeah, we're going really well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll do some Q&A at the end. I haven't done any Q&A in a while. All right, this one is called Voodoo Holiday, and it's by Greg Tressel. Voodoo Holiday by Greg Tressel. Cast your votes, plus one if you'd like to see that song make it into the Taxi Top Ten for next month. Um, I see some discussion in the chat room about uh, mixing. Somebody said, gee, I knew vocals needed to be front and center, but I didn't know that bass and drums did as well, I think was the comment. It's scrolled off the page now. But, uh, yeah, uh, you know what? When in doubt, put it down the middle. Um, 
if you go back and listen to early stereo records uh, like Sgt. Pepper or maybe creamed Israeli gears, you will hear stuff like the drums, all the drums over on one side and the bass on another. Nobody knew what the hell they were doing. Everything was a guess back then. But uh, truth of the matter is kick, bass, snare, and vocal should almost always go down the middle. There are exceptions to every rule, but that's just a good general rule. And start your mix out by, uh, you know, bringing all the faders down after you mess around a little bit and see where everything's at. Um, and bring the bass and the kick up together and get a balance between those two. At least that's my personal preference back in the day when I still worked in the studio. If you bring the kick and the bass up, that gives you a nice, good, firm bottom end. And that's what you build. That's the foundation that you build the rest of the house on. Okay, uh, voting still going on. Well, they're asking how many songs actually made it onto the playlist to be voted on. That was 40. 20 so, this week and 20 last week. So we had, uh, Bria just told me we had 40 songs. 20 this week, 20 last week. We probably had like 120, 130 submissions yeah. altogether. Sadly, you know, even as fast as I'm going today, I don't think we could have, well, we couldn't get more done than we're getting done. Um, Let's see, looks like the voting in that one. Uh, Robbie Hancock says, I should do a taxi TV specifically on mixing. It's been a while and I would love to see another one. Excuse me, another one of those. Uh, I'm always afraid to do those shows because there are people that, uh, oh, what's his name? I can't think of his name, but you know, there, there's, a, there's so many people that do in studio um, tutorials on mixing and stuff. Uh, with me, it's more of a visceral talking you through thing rather than I don't get very technical about it. Um, I'm happy to do it. I like sharing what I know. And I was taught by like the masters of the universe from that classic period of 70s rock. Um, and I will have uh, Ronan. Um, gosh, I think it's probably been six or seven or eight months since Ronan's been on the show. Ronan uh, Murphy, so I'll bring him back. Uh, before the road rally. Uh, okay. Robbie says, by the way, Robbie, I did see your email over the weekend, I think, and I'm sorry, I saved it to answer it because we were heading out the door and I've got about 80 emails that I saved this weekend. Um, so I'm sorry. So consider it answered right now. Whatever you said, thank you, bro. <laughs> um, I remember reading the first couple sentences and it was complimentary and, and very much appreciated. So thank you. Um, Okay, uh, tutorials, okay, uh, we are good to go on the next one, and this one is called Something's Wrong by William Desmond. Cast your votes, 
plus one if you'd like to see that in next month's Taxi Top Ten. And while your guys are voting, I'm going to ask Bria to go uh, just jump into the middle of that song somewhere and play it because that was a really good example of a kick and bass relationship being locked in. Uh, the playing was tight and the sounds were working together. So let's listen to a little bit of that just for the bass and kick relationship. Hey, there's something wrong with me. Listen to the reverb on the snare. Nice sounding reverb. Great guitar sound. It's all balanced, it works. Contrast this with some of the stuff we heard earlier in the show. It makes a difference. It's, uh, you know, you still have to have a great song, but you can hurt a great song by having a bad mix. A great mix won't help a bad song, conversely, sadly. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, looks like some votes are still coming in. While you guys are finishing up the voting, I'm going to go warm it up. I should just get a Nest thermostat. That's what I should do. A Nest thermostat, and then I could control it with an Amazon Echo Dot. And I could just sit here and go, Alexa, make it warmer in here. And she would do that. And then I would say, Alexa, can you please do the dishes after dinner? And she'd say, I don't understand that request. All right, a few more votes still coming in. While you're voting, I'm going to take something itching me in my back. I had to scratch it with that ruler, which I haven't used in about four years. Uh, okay, looks like we're good to go. We're moving on. I'm just guessing that this one's going to be an instrumental by the title. If it's a song and this is the title, we may have a problem, Houston, because this is called A Spatial Anomaly uh, by Frank McDonald uh, from McDonald Douglas, I'm guessing, <laughs> continuing on with the spacecraft theme. Anyway, let's have a listen to A Spatial Anomaly and find out if it's an instrumental or a song. Here we go. Anomaly by Frank McDonald, plus one if that should make it into the taxi top ten. You guys have all heard me uh, talk about alien space rock before. I think that song is genre defining for alien space rock. Good job on that, Frank. Um, and Peter Rail, I can't believe I'm not even going to repeat that comment. Uh, it, it's not. Um, uh, I'm just going to leave it alone. And, and uh, Robin Laguna says, uh, getting a little distortion is that my connection. Uh, it was an unusual circumstance. Um, I, I was seeing the meters pegging in the red, even though the music wasn't all that loud. 
And it was reminding me as we were listening of a conversation I had with a taxi member, I don't know, a week or so ago. Um, eight o'clock at night, he was West Coast, I'm West Coast. We were having a, a discussion about mastering and how many people address mastering from a root mean square or RMS perspective and thinking that that is the magic fairy dust of uh, mastering. And we got into talking about things like base energy versus overall energy and just all this esoteric mixing stuff. And as I was listening to that song, I'm watching the meters pegging into the red and I was thinking of the conversation because it wasn't that loud in the room, but there was so much bottom end on the guitar that that was in fact just slamming the meters and causing distortion on your end. So uh, that's where that happened or why that happened. Um, all right, we're good to go. All right, next song. Uh, oh, speaking of people I've spoken to on the phone recently, um, a gentleman named Henry Winkle. Uh, met him. He came into the office and we spent, I don't know, an hour or two hanging out a couple of years ago. And I really, really like Henry. And uh, I'm envious of his life because he's... Um, he basically lives in a rural area and uh, none of his neighbors are that close and very peaceful where he lives so it's kind of cool and he's a very talented man so let's have a listen to Bank Heist by Henry Winkle your votes plus one if you think that should be in the top 10 for taxis top 10 in September um, uh, what do I want to say oh Henry uh, will be coming to the road rally this year uh, he just sent me an email the other day telling me that he confirmed his room and everything at the hotel um, he's a talented man uh, when I first met him, I think he came down here. He was a little upset with Taxi over, it might have been, I don't remember honestly, but it could have been something like not getting forward on a particular thing and he thought he should have been. Uh, whatever the circumstance was, uh, the conversation went well. Um, and, and I think we bonded to a certain degree and uh, he really took what I had to say to heart and hunkered down and, and got his focus and said, okay, so it's not about the world loving what I feel like doing so much as it is me creating music that they actually need if I want to turn this into uh, like, you know, a business enterprise, which people would argue, hey, I do it for the art. Well, that's, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with doing music for the sake of just doing music because you love to. But I think most people join Taxi because they want to get paid for doing what they love to do. And the two aren't mutually exclusive, as I've said a thousand times. Um, you can create music that can earn you money and you can create music that feeds your artistic soul and both can coexist in the same body and mind. So uh, anyway, Henry figured it out and uh, put his uh, considerable talent to use and has started doing a lot of instrumental cues uh, of which you just heard a sample 
and I I think he's quite talented and he's gotten some stuff he's you know he's gaining momentum uh, and stuff is getting signed and I think Henry's got a pretty bright future ahead of him so I because I've got a little bit of time to burn I want to ask you guys uh, let's play a little precursor of what genre is that dun, 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 dun. so you tell me I want to hear what you guys think was the genre on that Bria was mouthing something to me that I can't. Oh, do you want me to play more? No, uh, no not not for the moment. Okay, I, I want to see, well. want to see what people said about that one, as far as the genre. Yep. People are getting it, and I'm guessing that you've learned that from watching Taxi TV and participating in the forum at forums with an S, forums.taxi.com. Um, people are getting it. <laughs> Wendy Lander says clueless. I don't think that's a genre. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that that was attention cue. Um, and tension cues can, you know, there's a range. Not all tension cues are exactly one thing. Uh, attention cue could be the music that's playing when you're trying to, when you're waiting for the bachelor to give a rose to one of the bachelorettes. The music that plays under that would usually be considered a tension cue. Um, you can have comedic tension cues uh, that would pop up in reality shows. Um, you can have tension cues like this one would be really good in an episode of uh, one of the crime shows you know where they're looking at evidence under a microscope or searching a building for blood splatter whatever um, anyway uh, this could definitely work for that and it would fall under the genre of tension um, It's good. P people are, are suggesting the kinds of scenes it could be used for. It's re that's a really good exercise to get yourself um, understanding the cues and understanding the value of a cue goes up. When you can imagine the kind of scene that an instrumental cue could be used for, that means other people will be able to imagine that it could work for a scene like that. So that definitely helps create value. Uh, anyway, good job, you guys. Uh, Oh, Kenda Potter's pointing out that we do have about the same number of people in the, that are voting in the chat room this week, so uh, it should be pretty much on par and equally weighted, and I agree, Ken. All right, uh, let's get back to some listening. Oh, and by the way, the title of that, let's, be, before we move on, you know how I'm always preaching about titles, right? Okay, Henry very wisely named that one Bank Heist. You can absolutely, if you were... Um, let's take the movie Baby Driver that was just out about a month ago uh, and it was all about bank heists and uh, there were several scenes where this absolutely could have worked where um, they have just pulled up in front of the bank in the car and they're pulling the masks down and they're checking to make sure their weapons are loaded and they're getting out of the car they're approaching the front door and walking in this would be perfect music for that so by giving it a title where it, it kind of predicts or telegraphs what the music is going to sound like, it makes it easier for somebody who's scanning a list of anywhere from five to 500 pieces of music looking for stuff. They know when they see a title like Bank Heist that the person who wrote that piece of music understands the business of instrumental music and production music libraries. So if they see Bank Heist, they go, okay, that person's got something that's probably going to work, at least be in the ballpark for this, and they're professional enough that they know how to properly title something. So Henry, you get an A+, plus, dude. That was a good job on that. Um, moving on now to our 17th one. Um, this is called, I'm guessing Chop It. It's spelled C-H-O-P-I-T, Chop It by Tim Harrison.
Appropriate by Tim Harrison. Cast your votes, plus one, if you'd like to see that in the September edition of the Taxi Top Ten. <laughs> SHP10 said, this is making my dog cry. Very sentimental dog. Synthman uh, duly noted, or a couple people have noted, it's like uh, Chopin, but with a pit. <laughs> Chopit, as we would say in the wonderful state of Illinois. Okay, we're going to have some time for Q&A at the end. I'm excited. <laughs> no, I'm not excited. Happy Clappy <laughs> is excited. I like that you guys are now, you know, chiming in with where you could see that place. Somebody, uh, Diaz Collins, just said perfume commercial. Absolutely. One of those commercials where the window is open, a floor-to-ceiling window with the uh, white curtains blowing in the breeze. Um, yeah, absolutely. All right, wait for another couple seconds to make sure all the votes are in. Yeah, if you heard static, it, it was something to do with the transmission, Michael. It, uh, it sounded good and clean here. It was a nice recording. And well executed, I might say. Um, feel and humanity are important. And this, uh, you know, this is the kind of track where you want a lot of feel and humanity in it. Mary Band says, sometimes the static is in the room noise and Michael's ceiling fan. I don't have a ceiling fan. <laughs> But walking home from somebody's house after having dinner uh, Friday night, my wife and I were walking home, and I noted that so many of the houses we walked by had ceiling fans in the bedroom. For whatever that means, who really gives a damn? Absolutely nobody. Okay. Um, Kenda Potter says next time we should use a uh, the uh, clappy uh, emoji instead of plus ones. Maybe. Hey, Music Cat. How are you? Good to see you back. All right. Uh, moving on. This one is by Michael Hurdle, and it's called I'm Not Dreaming. Does it matter where I Mind is always stuck on you. I see a vision, the two of us, and my heart skips a beat. I hope that I'm not dreaming that you would love me so. You'll never hear in the same sentence at my house because the last time I jumped a hurdle, I was in eighth grade doing track and went did a face plant on that gravelly stuff on the track. Never jumped another hurdle after that. It was very traumatic. It ended my track career. Um, okay, the votes are coming in. I see you guys have uh, adopted the uh, the clappy emojis, <laughs> and they're all clapping in unison. <laughs> they look like a bunch of seals. Speaking of seals, I saw a video over the weekend of some kid getting dragged out of a boat by a seal. <laughs> a 
Have you ever seen the video on YouTube of the guy that was um, deep sea fishing and a marlin? Uh, he had a marlin, and the marlin comes up and is doing a tail walk, as it's called. Uh, and they'll do that to try and spit the hook. I don't think they're doing it for exercise. And the fish was doing a tail walk and then launched itself. This is like a several hundred pound marlin launched itself into the boat and the marlin's bill harpooned the guy in the face actually went through his mouth out his cheek and harpooned the fisherman now some people i'm sure the folks at PETA would say he deserved that for hooking that fish and scaring the crap out of it um and just so you know most people release marlins it's catch and release fish generally speaking um dude that had to hurt several hundred pounds of marlin bill hitting you in the face ouch All right, the votes are still coming in. That one did nicely. Jesse saw it. <laughs> Jesse, it, it, it's a sad commentary on how we live our lives if we sit around watching Marlin harpooning. Oh, speaking of Marlin, <laughs> I saw a video, true story. Over the weekend, uh, I was watching YouTube, and uh, there was a video of a guy who was going through a divorce three years prior, I believe, and he took his wedding ring off and he'd caught a, a swordfish, which is another billfish. He caught a swordfish, he took his wedding ring off, made a few uh, off-color comments about his soon-to-be ex-wife, put his wedding ring on the swordfish's bill, then released the fish. Three years later, this was in the Mediterranean Sea, three years later, this dude is deep sea fishing again catches another swordfish. For anybody who doesn't like fish for swordfish every day of their life, to catch another swordfish is a big damn deal. Reels the fish in, getting a swordfish up to the boat, also a big damn deal. Pulls the fish out of the water with the help of, of the first mate. And what is on the bill of the fish? None other than the wedding ring he put on that fish three years prior. True story. Kid you not. Google it. Search it on YouTube. You will see it. Uh, okay, Kenda Potter saw a video of stingrays jumping out of the water like dolphins. Looked like they were trying to fly. Pretty cool. Yeah, if you've never been to Stingray City, and I forget which island is, somewhere in the Caribbean, um, you stand there and there are hundreds of stingrays around you. Pretty awesome. Did it when I was like 20, I think. All right, we're moving on now. This is song number 19. This is called Corruption by Monty Leach. what the vocal effect was. Frankly, I think it was just a vocal double. Um, not sure if it was done by actually singing the track twice or if it was an electronic double using a, a delay, but it sounded like a double to me. Um, okay, cast your votes. Plus one if you'd like to see Corruption from Monty Leach end up in the Taxi Top 10 next month. And then we've got one more to go.
can't believe we got through all 20 pretty effortlessly this week. Yeah, going back to the uh, swordfish with the ring on its bill. Um, I, I wonder if the guy's wife ever catches that fish, if they have to go through some sort of like uh, fish court to get a divorce. Um, what are the odds of that ring? I guess there's no way for the ring to come off unless the fish were to point its nose down and, you know, shake its bill. To, who even knows if the fish knew that the ring was on there? Or maybe the fish was cross-eyed from looking at the ring for three years on its nose. <laughs> Votes are still coming in. Somebody just left the chat room. It's like, oh no, if there's only one chance of me being heard, I'm out of here. Be ironic if it was their song that got played. Ken DePotter says he thinks they have to marry the Marlin. <laughs> I now pronounce you man and fish. Or maybe it's Charlie Tuna's girlfriend. Actually, nobody in the millennial generation has any idea what I'm talking about. Do you know about Charlie Tuna? Nope. Okay. Ah, these kids today. He was iconic. He was the gangster of fish. Okay. Uh, now pronounce you Marlon and wife. Yep. Okay, uh, I think the votes are in, mm -hmm. and we're moving on to the last one, number 20, Fortress of the Brave by Sergio Naranjo. of the Brave by Sergio Naranjo, or Naranjo if you're from Illinois and don't speak Spanish. Naranjo. Um, okay, so I'm thinking that we should announce, uh, not today, but announce it on uh, either next week's show. I can give them to you now, though, if you want. Well, then that would just ruin the suspense. And <laughs> okay. I want everybody to wait for a week, because we don't have to actually do anything with them for another week we or don't. so. So uh, we're going to double check our numbers and we will announce it uh, on next week's show. Um, and I can do four minutes of Q&A with you guys. Um, there's votes still coming in. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Um, Joe Gothard says epic. I would absolutely uh, call that epic. Um, I would call it epic dramatic uh, tension, uh, or uh, certainly, or uh, dramatic orchestral, um, epic orchestral. Um, it would work well for um, somebody said military and the title Fortress of the Brave. So yeah, it all ties together. 
Mary Band says, I think we're all voting for all of them. <laughs> you know, that's kind of the spirit of taxi members, very supportive of their fellow members, got to say. All right, any questions from you guys? Uh, it seems a little anticlimactic after all that voting excitement, but uh, I want to give you a full 90 minutes. So if you've got any questions about anything, I'm more than happy to answer. Hello. <laughs> Do you want me to play with sound effects <laughs> until we hit 5.30? Well then, no comment. Someone's asking about online signups for the rally. Interesting. It's not showing up on my thing. Um, uh, what exactly are they asking? Can they sign up for yeah, the rally? Yeah, are we doing online signups for the rally? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I think we're probably up to about 500 people so far, and we just quietly opened it about a week ago. Um, yes, go to taxi.com slash rally with a small r, and that will take you to a page where you can see all of last year's ballroom panels, and I'll tell you why last year in a moment, um, ballroom panels, classes, mentors, um, all that stuff, and there's a place that you can click a button that says register for the 2017 Road Rally, and there's a button where you can also reserve your hotel room, which I really think you should do early because last year, like three weeks before the rally, they were out of inventory. Um, what they do is they sell us a block of rooms and then after that block of rooms is gone then they can pretty much charge anything they want. I shouldn't say they sell us a block of rooms. They reserve a block of rooms for taxi members at the Taxi Road Rally discount price and then um, it, it's just they can charge anything they want. And so when people are normally, I think, paying 135, all of a sudden people find out that they're paying like 169, 179 bucks for the same room. So get on it. Go to taxi.com slash rally. Um, the reason that we haven't posted this year's panels and classes and all that stuff is it takes weeks for us to get back. People don't want to commit to being on panels at the road rally too far in advance because they don't know what their schedules are going to be. So they, especially like music supervisors, A&R people, um, they're afraid that if they commit now, then, you know, all of a sudden they're working on a, a movie and they can't. So uh, I would say generally speaking about four or five, six weeks in advance is when we really start nailing things down. But I will be able to tell you the topics of the main ballroom panels um, in the next week or so. I've got most of them figured out. Um, so that's about it, and we are now at 5.30, and even my uh, chat room is frozen at this point. Yeah, I can give you more questions. If oh, okay. Yeah, give me another one or two. Are you still planning a remote session with Rob at one of his studios? Yes. Um, Shirelli has been so unbelievably busy in 2017 that it's ridiculous. I, um, Deb and I went out to dinner with Rob and his wife. Four, five, six weeks ago, and he and I have exchanged a couple of text messages since, but n neither of us has had the time to go out. So, yes, as soon as he is slightly less busy, and I'm guessing that will probably happen around, might not be until like Thanksgiving or Christmas time. Um, another question? Um. So someone was asking, this is a rally question though, um, are we doing online signups for the listening sessions? I'm guessing they're talking about one-to-ones. We're not doing online signups. Um, you've got to, the reason is people would sign up with the best of intentions like I'm going to go and then not show up for the rally and not cancel their slots and then other people would not be able to get those slots. So the only way you can sign up for those is by showing up and signing up on registration evening, which this year is on Thursday, November 2nd. Got another? Uh, someone had a question about um, forum registration and someone else said to call us and tell them, Lori, you should call us. <laughs> And we'll help you out. Yeah. Call, call my staff at 818-222-2464. That number again in Los Angeles is 
222-2464. And the staff will walk you through. um, Ask for Matt is a good guy for forum registration. He knows that well. Mm -hmm. Um, That's it? That's it. All right. Uh, Without any further ado, I will bid you guys a fond farewell. I have no idea now what I'm going to do for next week's show, but I'm sure I'll figure something out. Um, And maybe I'll just do an Ask Michael Anything episode. I haven't done one of those in a very long time. I'm trying to do stuff that doesn't require a lot of effort on our part between now and the rally because it is that time of year where I'm coming in and like working 8 and 10 and 12 hours Saturdays and 6 or 8 hours on Sundays. So uh, I don't have a lot of my weekend time available to prep for the rally. So I will see you guys next week for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live. Bye, you guys.